it's recording. Did anyone hear the lady say it's recording? Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah, all good. Excellent. All right, thank you, everyone. Um, so we've just got everything together. We've got the slides going. Um, so this is a supplementary meeting uh, because we have quorum requirements. Uh, we didn't meet quorum the first time, so we're meeting again. And this is where we'll go through the exec nominations uh, and as well just have an opportunity to chat to the candidates and ask some questions before we open up the vote for the next two weeks. And then we also have some constitutional amendments that we wanted to discuss as well. So next slide, please. Uh, yep. Um, and just if I might note, uh, unless we happen to have quorum, we've got 22 minutes to kill before we can actually vote on things. So feel free to talk to fill in. So because actually, this is a supplementary, we uh, by the constitution, uh, there are no quorum requirements for this meeting. There are no quorum requirements after the first half hour. Uh, that is probably correct. Yes. Sorry, I'm half asleep. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, cool. Uh, next slide, please. Just got to kill 20 minutes and then we can burn on things. <laughs> oh, we, let, let's do the, we can do the questions and that. But Sahai, if you, you probably have something in mind already. Yeah. Okay, the, the next slide just changed to say president statement at the top. Yes, thank you. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to, uh, just have a bit of a closing speech or statement as president of Fusion, um, something that I'm very grateful and privileged to have held for the past year. Um, so, yeah, I think Fusion Party, we should be proud because Fusion, we've been a party that's held itself together for two years now since forming in October 2021. So this second AGM means that we've uh, had our two years together now and survived. Um, just wanted to put a reminder of our history and why we came to be. So the catalyst for fusion forming was due to the Party Registration Integrity Act, which was rushed in and passed in September 2021. And so what this really meant was it um, had further requirements for parties to even be registered and to be able to have a say on the ballot uh, in Australian political elections. So... Fusion was formed by five political parties that were likely to not meet these requirements at the current state that they were at. And so they reached out together and um, made sure that they were like-minded, had shared goals, and then together formed Fusion. So that's, of course, Science, Pirate, Vote, Planet, Secular Party, and Climate Change Justice Party. So that was in response to the Party Registration Integrity Act. Um, I also just want to highlight and remind people that fusion is playing a very important role in Australian politics. Just to reflect on the past two years, we've witnessed the decimation of the Liberal Party, which none of us saw coming. Um, and this is largely, you know, uh, influenced by the influx of the economically motivated and climate minded teals, uh, the Labor Party. So we're thankful the Labor Party is in uh, government now, but from what we've seen so far, they seem to have drifted away from their former workers' rights and union roots. So Labor hasn't really held its identity as strong as it used to. The Greens, they're always dismissed as being the rich woke vote, so just seemingly out of touch and unrealistic in their policies. And then we've also seen a lot of the smaller parties, including TNL, the new Liberals, Reason, Australian Progressives, Australian Democrats have either been deregistered or they're on their way to be. So fusion holding strong for the last two years is uh, quite significant and we still have a really important role to play if we keep strong. I see fusion as being a techno-progressive, environmentally focused party. And I think we have to emphasise that fusion is for the future. I don't see any of the other parties really speaking too much about this. So I'm privileged to be the first uh, Fusion president as elected by our members. Never really saw myself being in this position, never really had experience as a president of a political party before. Um, 
but I'm glad that I had that opportunity to just leave my mark a little bit. Um, the thing that got me into politics or the reason why I didn't see myself being president of a party ever or even in politics was the thing that really motivated me to get into politics was the 2019 bushfires and that Hawaii incident really made me angry and made me um, lose trust in how government was functioning in Australia. So joining the Science Party, I joined them because of the federal ICAC position that they had, wanting more transparency, integrity and trust. Um, and I also wanted to promote the recommendations from the Bushfire Royal Commission so the government could actually address them and prevent future bushfires. But before that motivation, I, I never really was that interested in politics. I always found it was a little bit um, hyper-intellectual, uh, a little bit too abstract. I observed it being a little bit too combative, didn't seem inclusive or accessible. The reason why I'm here today is I really think it's important that we change that. And I think politics should be more accessible uh, for if we want more participatory inclusion. If we want democracy to seem fair and representative of the variety of legitimate and authentic voices in Australia, we need to support ways for people to know how to access the structures of our democracy. Running in the Fed election was a baptism by fire, but one that I really liked because it gave me that opportunity to speak and talk and meet with people in the public and have those authentic conversations. Um, and I think from what we're seeing in the latest current events, we're dealing with cost of living crises, um, hyper individualism as the result of neoliberalism. Uh, we've got loneliness epidemics. We have AI accelerating change. We have mass media propaganda and uncertainty now about whether the information we even get online is true while being flung at us at such a rapid rate. I'm seeing that it's really important that while we're fostering and supporting people to be able to access these structures of democracy and have uh, authentic participation. We also need to form strong, personal, authentic, uh, in real life connections, uh, which are then grown and sustained by having stronger community around us. I think this is um, something that I was planning to achieve with Fusion and I see it happening. I see we're growing those connections and that strong community within Fusion. And if we keep doing that, then we'll be able to keep doing what we set out to achieve, which is um, fair democracy and accountability in government for a better future. So yeah, just wanted to say thank you again for the members for voting me in as president last year. Um, and I'm looking forward to see where Fusion goes as we move out of our teenage years and solidify our identity within um, Australian politics and where we stand uh, globally. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Saha. If I may say, just um, sort of on behalf of the exec and the membership, um, with, yeah, with Saha um, not nominating for the position again, I think we can all say thank you for holding the seat of president this year. And um, you brought a brought a unique and unique energy and perspective to the role that was very much needed in areas such as engagement and uh, a lot of the various kinds of content you've created and and uh, various parts, parts of leadership. And it's uh, been an intense time as Fusion continues to determine its, and its identity. So it's uh, a difficult job. And I think we can all say we appreciate the effort you've invested into the party. Thanks, Saha. Thank well you, said. Thanks, all. OK, next slide. Okay, oh. so confirmation of minutes. So this is something that I think we just have to run a motion on um, and so just say that if people have looked at the minutes that we accept and confirm those minutes. Yeah, technically we do have to wait until it's been half an hour since we opened this until we can actually do that uh, because of I the see. constitutional oh, wow. requirements. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I spoke long enough. <laughs> Yes, not. Yep. not quite. Um, do we actually have that um, <laughs> um, available to circulate to the members currently here? Uh, uh, so it is on the uh, website. I will put the link into the group chat for everyone. 
in the meantime, in the half hour, shall we skip ahead to the other parts we don't need to vote on? Uh, well, that would be uh, either the nominees for the committee can do their talks again if they want, though. I mean, you all did it during the last meeting, and so people have had the opportunity to view those. But I guess perhaps a question and answer session could be done. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, it would be what discussion around the special resolution to amend the Constitution? Mm -hmm. Oh, Sahar, what do you want to do? Um, so let's just, I guess, move on <laughs> to the next bit. Um, I think it might be a good opportunity to, because we did have one new nomination since the last meeting that we had, and that was Bryn. So if we can have an opportunity for Bryn to say hello and, and do their five minute pitch, um, we can do that. Yeah, I suppose. Yep. And Bryn, you're going for the dispute resolution officer? Yep, I'm aiming to continue with my position to, to yeah, I'm aiming to continue my position alongside Liam. And anybody else that wishes to put their hands up? Yes, it should be noted. I think we have a total of five positions available for dispute resolution committee, and I believe we only have three nominees. Wasn't the mm -hmm. initial attention meant to be like three or something? It was just, it became five because maybe because the Pirates put all of our members in there, uh, potentially. I, I... I think no, we wanted it, it to be larger in any case, simply because um, as we saw with the thing that we had to handle earlier this year, it really helps to have extra people on the dispute resolution okay. committee in case some people are busy. <laughs> it does. It does. I do get it. Yeah. Well, I guess the good thing is we don't have to um, elect the DS, the DROs um, here. I think they could potentially be delegated or correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we could have um, others uh, elected or appointed later. I'd need to double check the exact one by the constitution. Yeah. But yeah, those don't technically have to be done at uh, AGM. We're just doing them alongside because it's convenient, convenient. to do so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All so right. if well, you want to ask me any questions. Yep. As I'm not exactly very good at explaining myself, but I could be, maybe you could pull something out. Of me, so as I said, I'm aiming to continue. Do I? Most of my experience is my history with the re role of doing this plus going since 2019 for the pirate for the pirates, wishing to learn more. And I I should when I maintain my own when when I am okay to help with further back end further work maybe with working with Drew on South Australian stuff or anything more generic I suppose Satch as well well Drew and Satch but and anybody else okay yeah, yeah. no I think uh, I think for I local SA question. stuff plus also nationals yeah yeah yeah, yeah that would be good Well, perhaps we should open the floor for if there were any other questions to any of the other candidates as well. I mean, we do have, what is it, nine more minutes that we have to fill uh, technically? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, if we can um, bring up the slide with the candidates. With the um with the competition against um for president, I guess I haven't noticed much um or I guess like nothing much has happened since the last meeting. It's still not clear. Drew, why should we vote for you and or, or Miles? Like I guess nothing much has happened these last two weeks. How do we how do we finally resolve the the conflict? Not really a conflict. We've we've both set our pieces. Uh people are happy to listen to those pieces and make their own decisions. There is a, a, an interesting point of differentiation there where Drew is uh, 
someone who's interested in approaching it as administrative role. Whereas for me, I'm more in the operational side of things. And so there's some it's kind of subtle differences in how we do it. But I think ultimately, um, whichever uh, whichever one of us gets it, we'd still be doing approximately the same things. And so I guess it's a matter of specialization. And doesn't it feel great that we get to pick between two good options instead of shit and shit light when it's the usual uh, federal elections? Yeah. Um, is there uh, anything stopping the party from having two co-presidents? The constitution. That would do it, yes. Sorry. <laughs> but that, that is a good question. That's a really good suggestion as well. A lot of organisations these days are actually starting to have co-chairs uh, most commonly a male and a female co-chair. Um, so, for example, the Australian Republican movement has recently enacted the two co-chairs system. Um, also, um, uh, the uh, a lot of um, a lot of anarchist or anarchist flavored organisations have as well. So, for example, the um, uh, autonomous Rojavan uh, in Rojava, the confederal structure there relies on co-chairs at a lot of levels as well. I mean, that sounds like something that, I mean, obviously we can't bring it in at this uh, meeting, given that uh, it's far too late to submit resolutions now. But, uh, I mean, I gather there's likely to be continuing discussions on uh, the Constitution over the next year. Uh, so resolutions could potentially be made for that to happen uh, before next year's AGM. Mm. As an idea, if, say, one of you was to become president, you could do it with a commitment to pass a resolution to bring in the other one as co-president during the year. Well, that's functionally already the relationship that Drew and I have. Um, we've co-prepared the operational plan and um, we're uh, discussing a lot of ideas as well for um, various sort of administrative stuff along the way. Um, and so... Uh, as well as the broader executive as well. But um, we're, we're the ones who are motivated to do a, a lot of the little tinkering around the edges, um, not not necessarily out of a sort of a motivation to build a perfect structure, but more that the you know, little tweaks along the way can provide little boosts. And um, from an administrative perspective, it's nice that it can happen in the background. Yeah. We've got slightly different focuses on uh, what we do. But a lot of a lot of the stuff that we've been doing has started with a conversation between us in the last several months. So, yeah. And also, given that it is likely to, that regardless they'll be both on the executive, uh, regardless of the uh, outcome of the vote. Well, I'm quite happy to the... um, to step back off the executive towards an operational role. Um, at the moment, I'm doing a lot of the life support stuff in for the party in terms of uh, events administration, and um, and that's not necessarily an exec role, but um, re related to the constitutional amendments we're talking about, there's uh, potentially uh, there's been a lot of talk about how in the party we're kind of top heavy in certain ways by design, and. Um, some of my ideas which didn't or haven't sort of made it through to discussion here um, in terms of the constitutional amendment is the, um, and, is, and doesn't need a constitutional amendment, right, is looking at the committee structure and how we have uh, uh, some, some kind of formal roles and formal setups, but they're not necessarily a clear uh, understanding or mandate and for how those roles are supposed to operate. And so as part of the operational plan that Drew and I put together, it's figuring out what are the actual activities we need to do and then what structure is implied by those activities. And so um, there's there's potentially a lot of sort of simplification and streamlining we can do. And um, particularly also how and this quote kind of relates to my, my thoughts on the position of the National Campaigns Coordinator, that um, I, I think it, um, in my constitutional amendment, I've obviously removed it. And my rationale for doing so is that it's an elected position, but the role description in the constitution and the, the, the way it's sort of been envisioned as a role heavily implies that it needs a level of campaigning ability, which are, uh, 
few of us would claim to have and uh, and it's and um it's arguable that none of us have that level of experience or motivation to do it but then additionally also there's a lot of operational things that come into the role which heavily imply that it shouldn't be an elected role but rather should be an appointed role through some kind of ten uh, merit-based hiring process um in a certain sense where like not, not necessarily that we're paying someone to do it but rather that we're saying here's what the job needs to be done here's, here's the job that needs to be done and um who, who do we think could sort of out of out of a pool of volunteers who are interested and motivated could could fill that really well yeah the summary of that issue actually um, and as as also as noted our top heaviness by design does bring with it or has brought with it a, a certain responsibility to leverage that uh, to engage people, which, as it turns out, has been a challenge this past couple of years in some places and sometimes. So, yeah, there's definitely going to be uh, a serious look and discussion about what that in looks like in the future mm. uh, coming up. I can't my... help but think that between the pandemic and the relief of the LNP finally getting kicked out of power, a bunch of people are perhaps uh, relaxing. Uh, and it's not that they're unmotivated, but that they're more um, taking a break when they feel like it may be safe to do so. But, I mean, as we've seen with so much of what the government's doing, especially uh, some of the stuff that they're putting in right now, which would uh, further entrench the two-party system. I mean, there's a, they, they put a few sops to uh, people in those laws with, like, yes, we might have truth in, advertise, uh, sorry, truth in political advertising stuff and so forth, but uh, there's a lot in there that's really not good. And uh, I'm afraid this is going to be another case of uh, by the time people realize that the government's done something crap, that uh, it'll be too late to change it. This might be a good opportunity to go through a summary of the um, strategic and operational plan that myself and Drew have been working for. Well, we've just reached half an hour. So... Have we, we already we asked all, the get all those other the votes done while or... we can? Yeah. Yeah. Are the candidates happy with um, the questions so far? Anything else you'd like to add before we move on? I uh, had a, a comment in the chat from Tyrone saying part of why I backed out was the slow, no, unclear okay. pathway to adopt cool. new policy. Yeah, so I guess Tyrone backed out a while ago. We do have a process now. So yeah, let, let's uh, let's do the votes now, shall we? Okay, so confirmation of minutes. Let's just go through that. Um, so oh, um, motion to confirm the minutes from the previous AGM. Uh, I second the motion. Thank you. And we'll just put it into the chat, I or nay. Great. That looks like a majority. Okay, so we'll move to the next one. Okay. Uh, we're not quite to the majority of people, but we will be in a sec. Uh, just before we move on to the next one, is that uh, we should uh, follow up a question from Al Alex Yeager here about last year's? No, that, that... This was the motion for last year's. He's okay. okay. Just... Do we also need to do last month's? Uh, no. Okay. Thank you for that confirmation. No, the uh, no. the, the com minutes of the 
uh, aborted AGM and this AGM will be uh, combined and approved by the AGM next year. Yep. All right. Uh, so now accepting the financial statements of this financial year. Uh, so we had a presentation by uh, Michael in the last meeting. Are we happy to accept Michael's presentation from the last meeting on the 5th of November? Uh, I second the motion. Motion to accept them. Uh, one second before you start going, I let me put down in the chat. Uh... Sorry, thanks, mate. <laughs> just a, a divider so I know <laughs> exactly which is which. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, just to make the minutes clear, it's probably good to put the formal motion text in chat. Yeah, I probably should put the full motion, but it's okay. We'll yeah. have, it's good enough. It'll do. Yes, we work on we were, trust. Yeah, if we were yeah. doing this in person, this would all be like probably accepting it on the voices. We have enough eyes on the financials that is passed. I mean, people can continue putting in the eyes they want, but in the in the minutes, I think okay, that'll just beautiful. be done as passed. Does that look voices. like majority? Yep, clear majority. Yep, great. Okay, next one. So, constitutional amendments. So, we have three proposals: uh, version one point five by Andrew Leong and Drew Wolfendale. Um, version 2.0 by Andrew Leong and myself, and version 3 by Miles Whitaker. So let's go with the first one. Now, Run the just, motion. Yep. Just for clarity, first, I believe the ones we had at the previous meeting were the 2 and the 3, both of which proposed uh, larger changes. The 1.5 was uh, an initial document that both the two and the three were based off that basically contains all of the changes that two and three agreed on. And then uh, the uh... that's that's an apt, yeah. apt summary. Yeah, all the changes that two and three agreed on, and one additional change, which is basically a filler change to accommodate the lack of two and three's changes and their objectives uh, on one critical like wording point. There, there were some notes following the sort of discussion meeting that uh, I, I don't know where we got to with being able to properly circulate those. Is anyone able to summarize those for, for those here who haven't seen that? Yeah, Drew, could you also elaborate on the filler point? Uh, I probably can. Um, I'll just note that Simon's also raised his hand, who was uh, the one taking notes in that meeting. So, I think Simon was raising in his hands rather uh, regarding a question he sent me via direct message. So that's been. I, I can I can speak um, a little bit about this um, constitutional amendments, these conflicting uh, proposals before us. Um, so we we did have a a little uh, meeting with, um, on the Sunday after, and. Um, so essentially, um, we didn't have anyone advocating for the version two proposals. Um, the the people who put that forward are not continuing on the uh, executive, and so we we I don't I can't speak of motivations behind it. Um, but it it essentially was about removing branches. Um, and there, there was a feeling that there was um, not a transition plan in place to be able to implement that effectively if this comes to pass. So that, that could be a hassle. Um, and even with, um, like, overall, with out of, out of all the amendments, there's, there's probably not enough um, work that's been done to, to consult and with everyone and get... Uh, like an, an unanimous um, approval of, of all the, like a consensus of, of what needs to be changed exactly. So uh, re regardless of which one wins, whether whether it's um, two or three or 1.5, um, we, sh we should be setting up a, 
constitutional working group to sort of iron out um the the issues and, and particularly the contentious issue of whether we should have branches or not um i, I think it, it is a question that has been coming up for quite some time and, and has been leading to a bit of friction so um i would i would uh you know really uh, advocate that the exec have set up that working group um, so that we can iron out these issues once and for all. And if it requires some sort of special AGM to to be able to ratify that later on, so be it. Um, but I, I think for, for now, um, yeah, um, Miles can speak for version three, uh, Drew for, for 1.5. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I, I see them as, as fairly similar but it's it's mainly nothing too radical as far as branch structure goes um and i think um they could it, whoever whoever wins um in this executive um contest for for president i think they could probably work with either one of 1.5 or 3 uh, and version 2 uh would be a, a bit, bit challenging so uh i think that was that was the the outcome of that that meeting basically Um, yeah, and we're, um, okay, know, cool. Probably, Thanks for that, Simon. Uh, sorry, um, I'm probably jumping the gun slightly. Do we have slightly. any? Oh, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, oh, probably so, yeah. jumping the gun slightly, Thanks for but that, um, Simon. Oh. I think my connection might be <laughs> a bit bad. Yeah, I think we're, um, you, everyone's jumping in. Uh, so, uh, David, sorry. do you want to? Say your thing just quickly before we. Uh, yeah, just quickly. Yeah, um, uh, uh, when we get to um the My Miles version three, um, uh, at the end he says incorporate most of the the tweaks um proposed in um in in version two. Um, I did. I just like a little, little him to flesh out a little bit of clarification of what that means. But um, yeah. Just, just a sure. Minor. So. Yeah, so there was about there was quite a number, can maybe about fifteen or twenty sure, unique sorry, changes. Can there. I just interrupt? Can we just make sure that this discussion is limited to a minute at most? I think we've had plenty of opportunity and um out external meetings to discuss these. So now we just want to focus on uh, voting for each of these motions. Uh, we did have one question in the chat that I will just quickly address, uh, saying, is it possible to put both 1.5 and either none or one of two or three? And that completely depends on what is uh, voted on the floor. So if these are competing resolutions, we are essentially voting which of these should be put to the entire membership body uh in a full vote so when this goes into the opera vote it will be a i guess a ranked choice option between whichever of these pass and a, another option which is basically none of the above uh liam this the special resolutions don't go to open vote it's only a floor vote i believe uh let me double check that uh, it's uh item 40 on page 29 there um so regarding the questions in chat there's a fairly straightforward interpretation where the um we vote for them or we hold a vote in them all sequentially and each one that passes overrides the previous one and so the final state is the latest motion to pass that is accepted in its entirety so 1.5 is included in two and three and so um so function fun fundamentally we can do it incrementally where if we hold a vote in 1.5 if that passes okay and then two if that passes okay or if that fails okay but then go to three and vote to see if that passes or fails and whichever is the latest one out of those motions to pass will then go on to be the final result. I'm trying to find the actual formal uh, rules in the constitution for amending the constitution itself 
Yes, it's uh, item number 40 on page item 29. Item number 40 is so, special resolutions, but that doesn't explicitly mention adjustments to the Constitution. Yeah, uh, uh, obviously we need to have a means are... to do so. Um, but that that's actually a surprising omission in our Constitution that we don't have an explicit thing on here's how you amend this document. No, I'm pretty sure it is in there and it specifies that it's a special resolution. I'll have a look and see if I can find the section. Yeah, if, if you can find it, that would be great because I can't find it. I agree that with the Constitution as written from going back over it again, uh, it would have to be a special resolution because that's all the only uh, framework that kind of makes sense. Um, but I do not uh, see. It says in a note under number 40, a uh, special resolution is required to alter these rules. Uh, to alter these rules. I guess if yeah, if we take rules as being the constitution, yeah. um, and that's specified in item number eighty on page um, forty-eight, alteration of rules. These rules may only be altered by specific resolution of a general meeting of the association. Okay, so yeah, uh, in that instance, geez, uh, yeah, the only way we've got this as the constitution is currently written uh, uh so simon the so, um, okay. section Would 41 we... specifies it has to be a simple vote yeah. without references yeah um i might while you look at things just address a question from alex uh you asked about the uh clarify the uh the filler statement in the uh version 1.5 um in the process of deduplication uh a line was removed which potentially created a conflict with the existence of the branches in the constitution and the lack of a potential statement that might have specified that they should be there um and so it's a rework of a statement rather than a, that replaces the removal of a statement to enable them to not be in conflict with the uh, rest of the constitution. Perhaps we it's should in... get some informal um, intention because, yeah, I have kind of also just realised that the voting order will decide everything. It, it... Yeah, if this this is somewhat awkward because yeah, it could mean that if people are in favour of multiple ones, that they can't actually uh, take their preferred necessarily. Um, version two and version three are conflicting, and yeah. so we can have any, we can have either or neither, and in the event that both motions are passed, then it's the second one which goes through. There, there is another option, however, though, which is that we we discussed the um, how it would be beneficial to go through and workshop the amendments further, um, given that there is a lot of overlap between them, and we could make a lot of productive gains by, for example, looking at how the state branches are implemented in the constitution, as well as some additional changes which um, which Andrea and myself made separately, but didn't make into one point five, but should probably be uncontroversial. So um, in, in the event that, uh, and so, so to make that happen, um, I'm willing to withdraw my motion for version 3.0 on the basis that we go ahead and discuss it um, if, uh, if Zaha is willing to withdraw version two. I mean, it kind of sounds like given that 1.5 includes the things that two and three agree on, I mean, are, are you basically saying here, Miles, that you would be prepared to endorse 1.5 and Saha, would you be prepared to endorse 1.5? Yes. Yes. I would like to see an informal two versus three vote just so we know where the people present stand before anyone commits to withdrawing their motion. Yeah, good idea. Why not? 
we could what we could do is just put first or second in chat. Oh, I've put in the chat. I'm willing to withdraw version 2.0. I haven't really advocated mm. for it at all. Um, I'm happy for the opinion poll to go ahead, uh, but but also bearing in mind that um, that I do think it is important and useful that we go through the longer discussion. Um, so is everyone happy if we do an informal opinion poll then about these two set of amendments? So yep. bearing, bearing in mind that um, my version three includes additional changes as well. Um, for example, um, I've made, I've, put the code of conduct into the constitution as well as um, made some other small reforms, um, which are, which are, which are in the set of notes, which I've linked in the chat. Uh, so can I, can I just um, check? I think the, the main issue in contention is whether it's a, a fusion should have um, be a party of parties or we, which is what we use as, branches or we should not be a party of parties and just merge all as one so there are i know a lot of different things that are that are less contentious that change things around but i think that's that's the main sticking point so is that what we're doing the opinion poll on on that branch question uh that uh, is yes there is there is actually poll options in zoom so uh, so so I think if we could break it down simply, the, the question, the polling would be, uh, do, do you think Fusion should ha have uh, branches of uh, of a formative parties or should it all be just together, merged as one? Uh, That's the most simple way to put it. Not, should, and should, there, should there it be specific also. to the, the, the actual proposals rather than on one of the debates within... Yes, the, the, the vote needs to be specific to the proposals, but you could summarize the most crucial conflict between them as being centered on that. So, so bearing in mind that these are the constitutional changes which are partially necessary to, to make that happen um, because there's some uh, potentially spicy complications by putting these changes through which um, there's no clear way to immediately resolve. So Liam, would you like to run that floor vote or that floor uh, poll? Um, unless I would Sahar, need to be you... made a co-host of the meeting to be able to do that. Yeah, I can do that. Liam, where are you? Great. Okay, you should be co-host now. While we set that up, um, perhaps we could have two sides of the argument of what what's the benefits of complete merger versus keeping the branch structure. So, so I think we've done that ad nauseum. Yeah, but yeah. If we, there if we... are new people present though, and... but that's okay because that's not the purpose of this meeting. We've had enough opportunities to discuss this. Well, you want the and opinion yet the poll, discussion so isn't finished. Should you should know I what... do not appear to have polling ability we might not have it maybe there's no point doing opinion polls if we're yeah. not going to present a question properly no all good we'll do um just to say we'll type a message people can do the thumbs up we'll do that as the the can kids we, count can we put us if we do it we do have to go to open vote for whatever special resolution ends up getting put right no no okay oh okay cool or, or maybe we can come back to it at the end and get, the other, get the other business out if it's just an opinion poll Yeah, guys, we don't need the poll. Just can we do the thumbs up for one of these options, and we'll yeah, we'll see how it goes. We should we should hold a vote on one point five, a formal mo a vote on that motion, given that two oh, and we'll... three have now been withdrawn. Okay, what? Sure. Well, if if Miles has said version three is withdrawn, and Saha was saying earlier she's prepared to withdraw version uh, two, then we can I think go ahead with the one point five vote. Uh, are you both comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, let me do this properly in the chat.
This is Reddit style approval voting. One one thing of note is that whichever one we pick, we really do need to commit to having a working group and a special general meeting to sort out the remain the remainder of things that need to be addressed before the next AGM. That does yep. need to be a target of this coming year. I need yeah. to leave sharply in about five minutes, but I would like to take two minutes to give a presentation of the strategic and operational plan. Operational plan. Okay, well, we'll have to do this motion first. So the motion is in the chat. It has been put forward. It has been seconded. Place your votes. I do have the proxies, so I'm watching that. And I do believe with the proxies we have, that is formally passed. With. Great. And so that means I now need to bring up the 1.5 constitution on my screen, because that is now the formal constitution as of this vote. And I have to I'd refer like, to that um, document instead of the other one. <laughs> In um, effect, so after being sent to fair trading? Yep. It does have to be sent to fair trading. It has to be sent to fair trading first. Okay, cool. Um, I'd like to uh, suggest that extremely minor formatting changes can be made um, without going through a special resolution. The constitution actually specifies that minor formatting changes may be made without doing so. Yes, can someone please do that <laughs> at some point? Yes. Yes, that can be done, no worries. Beautiful. So I think that concludes the formal components of the AGM. Yes, that is all the votes that needed to be held. Uh, mm -hmm. So now uh, we did already have the vote on financial, Simon, I believe. Yes. The, the statement of council was approved, yes. So. Excellent. Thank you. So I'm happy to close the formal part of the AGM. Um, a little uh, bit sorry, on strategy. Sorry, you're sorry, lagging. We can't hear you. Free to present that. Uh, sorry, Sahab, you're uh, lagging. We can't hear you. And I'm not sure if she would have heard me given she was lagging. <laughs> uh, I believe she was saying that uh, that closes the formal part of the meeting. Uh, so I had a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, yes, you are, will be getting a OPA vote email for the position votes. Uh, that will be coming sometime over, well, I'll try and set that up within the next 48 hours to get that sent out to everyone. Um, but yeah, that'll go out soon. Great. Thank you, everyone. I think on that, with my internet being bad, I will leave but everyone else happy to stay thank you saha thanks thanks thank you thank right. you could i get and, uh, thank you liam for working through that today no i well, i should say thank you saha and miles for being willing to withdraw and making that a lot less difficult to handle than it would have been otherwise there's always ways forward through any difficulty All right, can I get co-host? I think Michael might have it. Uh, yes, Michael currently has host. I've, uh, I've got it again now. Yes, the house just logged out. Okay, because I'd lost it before. There you go, cool. You should have it now. Now, I Thank will you. have to head off myself, I'm afraid. Uh, so we did have a question in chat from Tyrone asking, what is the new policy process? Uh, so maybe that's one best answered by either Drew or miles but uh um, very very briefly it's uh quite similar to the old one but um come along to the meetings present ideas and then work on it 
So uh, to quickly go through this, um, the strategic and the operational plan, it's been put together between myself and Drew and we've um, ran past the executive. It's um, the strategic, strategic plan at least is broad enough for high strokes that uh, there's not a huge amount of detail per se. The operational plan is where a lot of the detail is. Uh, so the vision as we went forward to, um, add, as you can see on screen, to strive for a fee, free, fair and innovative society for current and future generations and so on. Um, the deliberative democracy point is one that's, I believe is quite important from an operational side. Um, I'd also like to note that we did get um, in, in the feedback from party members after putting this out, because the process we went through was with a small number of um, um, key figures, probably exec, um, right, major volunteers and branch representatives. And so wider feedback we got after going through that process said that um, evidence-based policy was a, a major reason for a number of members um, and in a similar saying, probably a vein of rationalism as well. And so looking forward, we'll review the vision next year and um, and have a broader process which should address that. Uh, the mission is more about uh, the, the, the steps we're going to take along the way towards the long-term vision, which involves wide collaboration and, um, and building consensus, some of the key points. And that's something I've worked at very heavily and I'll uh, continue to do so both from a rationalist basis, looking at evidence-based policy, but also um, from more, more of a democratic basis as well. And I believe that's a, there's a tension there, which is really, really enlightening and productive between direct democracy and between um, a technocratic and evidence-based solutions. The um, the purposes are, are, are kind of like sim similar to the mission in that it's what we're doing uh, per se. And so obviously we're doing this by contesting Australian elections, seeking to get people elected. But along the way, we're also advocating for our policies, philosophy and values which um, uh, it may seem a bit repetitive to go through it, but it's really important that we do have shared alignment around what we're doing, how we're doing, why we're doing it, and, uh, and, and, and how we talk about it as well. So the strategic goals is kind of the nuts and bolts. Um, the, um, these are broadly prioritized, but that's not to say that the lower priorities will be ignored. Um, it, it's more almost more of a sequential thing where We'll, we'll tick one and then sort of work on the others more or less equally. So maintaining 1,650 members we have achieved for this cycle and is now done for approximately the next 24 months, about two, maybe, maybe even 36 months. Um, we have passed the AEC audit where a number of other minor parties have failed. An important point there to note is that uh, the Fusion Party is now the last teal political movement outside of climate 200 and the um and the voices for and the community dependence so we are obviously organized as a party unlike all of those uh, but we definitely fit within the teal banner now in terms of uh the, the other points of strategy the um so i've identified i think nine candidates um, and the basis for that is the two senate candidates to get our name on the ballot across the entire state and then house of reps to have a much more focused campaign where we can pour resources in and build a strong local movement and um, and a similar rationale as well for all of the other smaller states, but but the the reality is that we have strong numbers in Melbourne, strong numbers in Sydney, and then the next closest runner runner up is Brisbane, and followed by Adelaide and Perth, and then um, a, a skeleton presence in Northern Territory in Tasmania, and so uh, and, and so from that perspective, this is where a lot of our organising already is, and and there's a lot of pot growth potential there as well. Um, party revenue is an important thing to look at as well. It is important to have a financial plan, which um, I've been working with Michael and we sort of have a rough draft. Um, we've started looking at that, that, that donations and how we can support donations and how we can spend donations as well. And then the final point is something I've brought up a number of times and I've put a lot of action into as well, which is um, supporting the growth of state presences, particularly in state capitals and particularly um, I put a lot of time into Melbourne uh, but I think um, Sydney is is equally important given the strength of our member base and support base in Sydney. And uh, and again, Brisbane is also not far behind in terms of numbers and potential growth. And so, um, and and that kind of goes hand in hand. The state branches, in a certain way, I see them sort of synonymous as local branches within the state capitals. Uh, so, um, so from that end, there's the densest proportion of numbers and potential support within those major urban areas. Uh, it's where a lot of our support is, where, where a lot of our aligned or affiliated groups are as well, who are most likely to support us. 
Um, so the key points about the actual movement building strategy itself is here. Um, the most at the most ba at the baseline level, there's this concept called relational organizing, which it can be summed up as stronger links between ind individuals by sharing stories and building up bonds. Then, which then goes on to strengthen the organization itself. And there's a wide body of evidence and theory which I've used to to build up this. And, and relational organizing, I've put together a um, a guide for us to start working through. But it's something that everyone in Fusion can do, and that I'd like everyone in Fusion to do. It is simple and straightforward and it's as simple as tell your friends about fusion but more importantly um, tell your friends about the issues that motivated you to support fusion whether or not you are a volunteer or organizer or executive or candidate or even a member i don't care if you're a member but if there's something you like about fusion a particular issue talk to people about that find a shared story and then find commonalities because those stronger bonds are i believe a moral good in themselves, whether or not that actually leads to anything else. But in this strategic plan, the next step is to move into issue-based organizing, which is where out of those shared stories, you identify um, key uh, key issues, which you can then go on campaign on and build up momentum sequentially. And the final point is called broad-based organizing, where we have unique groups with shared values, such as the party branches or such as state branches, which can then move together and support these campaigns. So to very quickly, the operational plan, there's this concept of a community fuddle where we have the concentric circles and the area we need to focus on and people will gradually move through towards the core. Not everyone will get through that and some people will get stuck along the way. And the area we need to focus on most is the followers and the participants, those two particular rings, because that is where most of our activity is. And that is where most of our support comes from and most of our votes and activity. And so, so that's really where a lot of our, um, most of our support needs to be aimed at. There's an alternative, alternative model here, which is how to actually get people moving through these four steps. And um, to finish off with the critical activities of the party, which, which move people through these steps is um, starting out with awareness with the widest point of the, of the model. It's things like social media and physical activism in the, in the real world, handing out flyers and having the t-shirt. And, and then so on moving down the steps. Now, I really have to go, I apologize. Um, and I'd love to take questions on Discord. And thank you so much everyone for coming along. Thank you, Miles. Thank you. There are some questions I can probably answer while we're here, if you'd like. Uh, I'll just love a breakdown mm. on uh, the policy process at the moment, Drew, if that's possible. So, um, Michael, please uh, correct me if I go out of line here, but I have an understanding of the planned process that you were getting close to the point of hopefully being able to do and then uh, currently experiencing some time and manpower shortages. Um, but the process, as I understand it, was uh, to have a an input capacity to receive uh, requests or statements from members and interested parties to act on, um, and then the policy development committee was to see whether that was something that fit into an existing place or an existing structure or an existing effort and direct it as appropriate, or if it was something which was uh, able to have a statement made based on our values in a relatively succinct manner to create a working group uh, of volunteers to craft a statement in response to a piece, uh, just as a, a high level values policy um, to then be approved by the PDC. And then for more complicated pieces uh, or where pieces interacted, that would then uh, spawn a working group with relevant research and information gathering requirements to form a more detailed piece of policy. Does that uh, fit with what you understood, Michael? Um, yeah, so I think, I mean, in terms of the question itself, I think there's th there are things around what has been the current policy, uh, like the, the, the development process versus what is in the sort of the plan for the future. 
Um, I think that, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure where uh, both the question and that answer sort of fits into that exactly. Um, but I have been saying on multiple occasions or the membership, membership uh, member meetings uh, and some other things that, um, yeah, as with the current sort of the current process, um, there has been as sort of similar to as Drew mentioned, there's the, there's the intake form and, and there's been the goal to set up additional work streams. So working groups and, and specific ways to for people to collaborate and, and, and whatnot. But um, yeah, we have just not been anywhere near as um, sort of able to, to, to sort of facilitate that and get a lot of that going. So uh, and we certainly want to. Um, so sort of to your question, as I, I sort of said in the chat, Tyrone, the, um, the, to get some, to get some movement going on those additional items, including your uh, proposals, that's something we, we sort of definitely want to do. So we need to, uh, yeah, we need to get that going soon. Um, if there are other sort of processes, yeah, Drew, that, um, like if we're going to look to better adopt or formally adopt, uh, more so if there's, if there's more people who can kind of help facilitate those, that, that's, that would be ideal so that we can, uh, get more legs underneath this work. As I understand it, what we really need is about two or three people uh, additionally who can work on facilitating and organizing groups and things like that uh, to actually make this happen in a more functional way. Okay. There's no, so there's no way, so like in the Pirates or, for instance, uh, I'll start with the Pirates. So with the Pirates, we can individual members can just bring a policy straight to the annual conference and then it's voted on the floor whether to accept that or not. So there would be, there's no kind of mechanism for that. Uh, so in theory, if a member brings a fully realized policy piece, the PDC could review that by our standards and rubber stamp it. Um, but there's not, a mechanism in terms of the uh, AGM or at a national party level approval process to just uh, vote on and adopt a policy like the pirates have. That's a very pirate unique function that we don't currently have here. Mm. So, uh, yeah, well, the, just, just just to yeah clarify there. So uh, with with the pirates, yes, you're right in that we we vote on the floor initially. So any member can bring. Uh, um, uh, either either a constitutional amendment proposal or uh, a motion to change our policies, uh, our, our policy platform. Um, but um, the initial votes on the floor only serve to see what goes to a member-wide vote and what fa if it fails on the floor that, and it's voted down by the people who turn up, then it never goes out. Other than that, anything else that passes is sent out uh, via um, a voting system in uh, encrypted emails that uh, allow people to use a code to log into a website where they then cast their votes. Uh, and so it, it goes out to our member base to actually mm -hmm. pass the pass anything that's already passed on the floor. Yep. So it's, it's a two step process. I, I might also note, um, our original, the the original um, goal, and um, if Andrew Downing was here, we would speak to that. Um, the original goal was that we didn't have people just putting stuff out of nowhere. The original goal was that we would run stuff through our PDC first. It's just that as we've lost internal PDC capacity, we've moved to more um, people just doing stuff solo. Um, but yeah, either way. Yeah, it's nice if it goes through PDC, but yeah, we we. Most often, more often than not, we we accept floor proposals from any member. Yeah, the other model is that in the Greens, um, it either had to go through PDC or individual branches could propose a motion to state council. So maybe we could have it. So like since version two didn't go through, we still have branches. Maybe branches can bring policies to be voted on. Yeah, I mean, r really, it, the thing with political parties is there's usually only a very small percentage of your member base that is active and involved 
in in moving things forward. So uh, I've I've found I've I've found it it's it just makes sense to let people that have that drive that passion for even just for a few months uh, to you know let them throw their hand into the mix and yeah ultimately we still get to vote on it all anyway but yeah g- g- give that give them enough rope to hang themselves I suppose is the odd saying <laughs> but hopefully it's definitely you know, an area that uh, we need to look at. Uh, mm. alternative mechanisms as well to make it more at least visible to whole whole pieces that might be brought forward. Uh, Simon, you've had your hand up. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to point out from what I've seen of PDC is, is that there is a uh, like a housing policy being set up initially as, as like, I think it's meant to be like a, a test model for future policy developments to like future topics as well and it's it's quite neat where you know people can add add comments and and such to to make it a collaborative effort um but i, I think um you know there's also talk of exploring more software where it could, which might be a bit more streamlined and and being able to to bring the whole party in rather than just working off a, a google doc um so I suppose when it when it comes to proposing policy, um, if it if it's not if it's not contentious at all, then PDC more likely to accept it. But I, I think there there has been something where there was um something that was going going through PDC and then did a bit of further consulting around the party with with people who were interested and in, including myself and and found that it wasn't really suitable so um i'm not sure whether new processes that are being proposed fit in with all this but it's something to be considered to just make sure that it's a it's um a truly collaborative effort of the whole party so um i just i, I just uh dropped my internet out for a couple of minutes so i missed some of that but um i'll just clarify quickly that the the the, the terms of reference of the pdc is that the pdc makes uh makes recommendations to the exec and the exec is what uh, uh, accepts uh, or approves certain motions or t- t- policies, um, but um, yes, the the overall goal has been that we do sort of create, sort of make things more collaborative, create sort of some sort of space or some some particular channel that that allows uh, collaboration that solves some of the issues, including um, discussions happening on Discord when only a portion of members are on Discord. Um, or sort of multiple streams on the same uh, thing happening in multiple t- multiple places. So people are either doing the same work twice or having all the same conversations mo- multiple times and things like that. Um, and um, yeah, there's a, there are a couple of technical solutions that we are looking at. So I'm partway through getting a liquid feedback instance set up to just to explore that a bit um, and for some custom things. But yeah, overall, um, some of it is just a facilitation thing or resources to facilitate. Um, but um, yeah, I think if there are uh, people who are keen to work on that process, that, that policy process, and uh, we've invited people to the PDC to who could be interested in sort of helping develop those processes, uh, maybe instead of like that being a invitation to a regular thing, if people are more interested in just having a, a further discussion on this or a, a, a sort of a working group to further develop the processes, um, we can, that's something we could do soon. Sorry, one Mike. one other um, thing. Oh, uh, given that this is getting recorded and it's going to get uh, broadcasted, would now be a good time to spruik how people could apply for the PDC. Honestly, uh, talk to anyone here. Yeah, I mean, raising any interest. I mean, there's been a couple of points where it's just it's been put out as just a hey, does anyone want to be part of it? Um, mostly with the idea that. The, the PDC's job, again, is to facilitate the policy development, not to be making the decisions or, or or sort of doing the work, although that's kind of what we've fallen into, which is both good and bad. Like it's, it's We've sort of had to in certain cases when there's no one else to do statements on things, but then in other cases, it's, I mean, it's bad because, yeah, it should be a more collaborative um, process. Um, but, but yes, uh, anyone wants to 
email contact exec or policy i guess it'll probably be so if that happened it would be circulated through everything else or otherwise if anyone's just interested yeah raise raise, raise yourself at any time cheers Uh, so since we're just having a more of an informal discussion, did did we end up doing a that vote on what people think of branches, whether we sh we should have them or not? We didn't, um, but I think it's probably not a valuable thing to do at this time, given the now substantially diminished number of people in this chat. Yeah, we, you can uh, scroll up in the chat and look at the thumbs on various comments. Yeah. Okay. Well, I look. I look forward to the new constitutional working group when that gets set up. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else anyone wants to raise while we're here, or shall we bring this to a proper close? Well, I'd just like to point out, Drew, that um, at times in your video chat, the Fusion light logo behind you kind of looks like a halo around your head. <laughs> so all hail our Lord and Saviour, Saint Drew. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, is I, it I've a been sign? Consciously is sitting this off... meant to be? Yeah. <laughs> I've been consciously sitting off to the left to mitigate that a little bit in the last 20 minutes or so. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you're aware of it then? <laughs> I am. Yes. I'm like, mm, sit over here more. All right. In that case, I think I will. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Um. Yeah. Talk later. Do we need a motion yep. to close? We're really close. Yeah. To we, we should have a motion to close formally. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. I I put forward the motion to close formally. Um, Drew, can you second it? Sure. I will second the motion to close formally. Okay. We can vote now. All in favor. Vote or depart. <laughs> Is it okay. possible for that to fail and then we just... <laughs> <laughs> We're forced here. We're forced <laughs> to stay. No one, no one can ever leave. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. No, okay, next, okay. Next, next year, we, we, we have to close the meeting. How long yep. do you think the meeting would stay? This is... The, this is the Pretty meeting long. that never ends. If if, if enough yeah, of us vote today, um, then we could we 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 could effectively just leave this AGM running until next year's. <laughs> is this Let's where we sing not. the song of "This is the meeting that never, that never ends"? ends. <laughs> 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 on, my friend. <laughs>